Yes, it's it's kind of to stop recording. Okay. 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 I don't understand that. Okay. Scary. Okay, okay. <laughs> and you know, in the future, you'd always be able to catch me audio wise over a phone call. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so. I just, I'm, the yes. only reason I'm stressed about it is because I want to get some of this wonderful stuff on the teaching resources. So, for sure. But, you will, you will probably be here in June when I come out, and if I have to haul the camera and the tripod oh, out again, sure, I will. Sure, sure, sure. It'll all work out. Yes. Um, so, so what I'm aware of is that you describe patients and facilities at George Derby, um, and now I'm wondering what you faced when you went to Valley View. Yes. Valley View Hospital was the, at the time, provincial geropsychiatric hospital. And I may have mentioned that a resident there had to be 70 years or older with psychiatric challenges. And I can even think of one woman who probably maybe is a relative of mine, actually almost maybe needed to be at a facility like that because at that age, over 70, that generation, I can recall her husband didn't have much in the way of recreation interests. So when he reached retirement, maybe here's a woman having her husband around all the time and not knowing <laughs> how to cope. And that brought on huge stress for that woman, um, a relative of mine. So I think at the time in the late 70s, early 80s, anyone over 70, indeed retirement and from my passion of recreation, if people don't have recreational interests or pursuits, that could lead to challenges both in a marriage and living in a home close together, um, or even as bodies, as we deteriorate somewhat in aging, um, that can be a challenge. And it was great that the province of British Columbia at least had a facility to, at that time, be able. I've forgotten how many residents we had at Valley View Hospital then, um, but indeed, the field of rehabilitation services, which Moira Jones led so capably, um, didn't have, when she hired me to move to Valley View Hospital, didn't have a recreation therapist on staff. So um, we could be innovators, and um, we were, I feel, and I was grateful for that opportunity. It was tough to say goodbye to George Derby Center, but we had laid a foundation there that anybody should have been, and I think did well. Uh, follow us and and um, but I enjoyed this new challenge and to have the opportunity to, to continue to work with Moira Jones. Yes, so it, at George Derby, I got the impression that you actually didn't really have a like that. There were the pavilions where the men slept, lived. Yes, there must have been a dining room. Was there was there a space for you to do rehab stuff? Do you remember like was there? At uh, George Derby Center in Burnaby, we had an, an auditorium in a separate building from the individual pavilions where residents ate. And you know, I've almost forgotten, but I believe some of them did m move from their bedrooms in these pavilions to a dining hall for their meals. Yes, but we had space for recreation events. But often is the challenge, even in the facility where I'm working today, to move people, even at whatever disability they might be challenged with, to move them to an event, whether it's a group event or an individual project or pursuit. Uh, whether it's out to uh, some raised garden beds for a gardening program at a certain time of year, of course, um, we often rely on volunteers to help us big time in, in recreation therapy. Yeah, because it would be a big job to get move people. Um, so what was the setup at Valley View? Do you remember? Valley View, if I recalled, we did have a facility, an auditorium as well, but there was the main, shall I call it, more like a however many stories hospital building and various pavilions there as well. So similarly, 
yes, we needed to will. In recreation therapy, we have the challenge to move residents from where they're housed or where their bed is either to a recreation room or bring recreation to the resident, depending. Um, when you think of it with um, someone who was an avid reader, well, maybe their vision has deteriorated or they can't hold a book. What can we do? Can we bring them from the, the local public library? Can we bring them taped books? And in those days, it would have been a cassette tape. Nowadays, so much we can access online and set up accounts for residents to um, be online or even if they have their own television set, have and if they have the finances to have pay-per-view TV, to enhance their many hours that they might spend confined to a bed. Yeah. So some of the residents at Valley View were bedridden. Oh yes, yes. Yes. And do you, did you do you have like you don't have? I'm, I can find this out from somewhere else, but I'm just kind of curious about the gender breakdown. I can't remember. Uh, all male war veterans at George Derby Center, Valley View Hospital. Gosh, I have forgotten. Okay. So that's yeah. a very good I mean, question in the demographics. Is. Yeah. And there were other, there were two other kind of uh, branch plants of Valley View. So there was Dell View in Vet Vernon, and then there was Skeena View up in Terrace. Does that, do you have any memory of those other yeah. facilities? You know, provincially in British Columbia, indeed, I knew there were perhaps other facilities giving care closer to home to where someone had grown up or lived um, but I sorry I don't know well, too much about them yeah because those other places were still in operation in some format though they may have been kind of like made more local but it's just interesting yes. I always heard that Valley View was sort of the the Provincial. flagship yes. institution right yes. so it kind yes. of makes sense like, um, Uh, so Moira said she was not the first person to do rehab at Valley View, right? But she was hired and obviously given money to expand their program. And I understand that she used a kind of interdisciplinary, a multidisciplinary approach and that she, she called on the services of not just a recreational therapist like you and the new music therapist but also had you know the chaplain involved and it seemed to me to be pretty amazing this kind of multidisciplinary way of pulling different therapeutic professions together for elderly psych patients so I was wondering if you could just riff on that a little bit. <laughs> oh. Um, Moira Jones, with her background in and a degree that covered both occupational therapy and physiotherapy uh, from the province of Ontario, um, had, a, uh, had a respect for all the other professions that need to work as a team to give top-level care to a resident. A great deal of respect for that and um, not just a band-aid approach of a of treating a part of a person, the whole person. So yes, um, spiritual care was uh, respected, the music therapy, occupational therapy, recreation therapy, physiotherapy, and, and a respect for nursing care. And if nurses maybe had had, um, how can I word this, their background, maybe just specifically nursing, uh, in those years, Moira really helped nurses understand the role of the other professions in rehab services if they weren't aware of we could go the extra mile uh, because nursing care is so primary and um, so needed, of course. But in the other hours of a day that a person has, what can the other services, how can we all work together to give the best of care. Thank you. Um, okay, I'm looking at my um, 
so, so I have, I, I totally get that you're a very positive person, mm -hmm. that, and, um, but I have also heard that there was some friction between Moira's team at Valley View and the nursing team. Do you want to speak to that? Or did, oh, that I can certainly. Uh, you know, Moira Jones is in the top of the bell curve, shall I say. Um, if a job is worth doing, it's worth doing well. And even as we might observe other standards in another profession, really as a team, we should be working, this is what I learned from her, working to elevate the excellence, deliver excellence to clients, residents that deserve the best of care 24-7. And if the rehab services field were new to some of nursing staff, in other words, new budgets allowed to hire from music therapist, recreation therapist, um, if that was something new to the primary care nursing people, yes, adaptations needed to be made. If, for instance, recreation was going to take someone out of the facility, you have to work with nursing care respecting how long it takes nursing staff to get people up in the morning and ready, say, for an outing. Um, and putting that in the book to make sure and making sure a ward clerk or nursing staff needed or re needed reminding that so-and-so was going out. Um, yeah, that can, if, if there are new procedures anywhere in any area of employment, um, there can be initial adjustments to be made. And, um, you know, that desire to be the best one can be and give the best of care was always Moira's standard. And yes, perhaps sometimes, um, if this was new to many, especially nursing staff, there was a little friction. But I think over time, respect was gained by being earned, by helping educate the team, other team members, as to the value of the contribution your profession can make to a better day for a resident. Yes. Um, was there was there anything that you that you tried that was a, that didn't work? But do you remember any? Oh. I mean, she was an, a woman of ideas, uh -huh. right? Oh, maybe I'll have to catch up on that. I can't thing and we're so I've sort of, I've got an idea of the sort of special things you did for the George Derby residents which I can see were really focused around in a way around male culture and their interests yes um, and their own life histories mm -hmm. but what did you do at Valley View like do you remember specific kind of events that you were involved mm. in? you know that's hard for me to recall but we did step up the great grandparenting program. That's a highlight I can remember. And the others, maybe I'll have to think about it well, a bit. I can perhaps throw out some ideas. Yes. I wonder if now you are working with women, did you do any cooking? Did you do any sort of sewing or any knitting things? Do you remember? Did you? Did you do any gardening? You know, I, because I've been working about nine years now in Vancouver at a long-term care yeah. facility, that's in my more recent memory. Yeah. Um, and indeed we do. We do have a baking program. Yeah. We have a gardening program. Um, we would have thought of those things then. I'm just having maybe... Um, no. Challenge just to recall I mean, that. This is like so long ago. <laughs> uh -huh. um, let me just think. Um, so you talk, we've talked about Moira a lot, but I wonder if you have any other people, either at George Derby or at um, at Valley View, that were significant people, significant team members, right? Indeed, the music therapists. Um, my mother was musical. 
I had to take piano lessons and I played two instruments in high school band, but the piano, I didn't go skiing on the weekend until I'd done my hour a day. So I knew the value of music, um, but I appreciated their talent because I wasn't gifted musically. I mean, I pleased my mom and took the lessons anyway, but I have a great deal of respect for, as I watch even in the present job that I'm in, a music therapist both individually working with someone or in a small group. And to see the joy and excitement or even a range of motion moving an arm or a limb with a musical instrument, uh, I have a lot of respect for the music therapists and uh, love to sit in maybe and see what they're doing on various wards where I work now. Yeah, the, um, what little, you know, I, you have worked for decades in this field and I'm trying to play catch up as a historian, mm -hmm. right? But the, what I hear about music therapy is that it's, it's a very promising practice with geriatric Yes, indeed, with geriatric care, there are so many deficits from vision, hearing loss, mobility. Um, so whatever modality can be used in a most positive way to reach a person focusing on the assets that they have left, depending on their age or their debilitation of health care, health process, um, I just admire what the field of music therapy can do and wonderful that there are programs training people with the talent in that area because I hope when <laughs> I'm a little older if I'm in need of this kind of care that there will be people to look after me with a variety of modalities to make my aging life a little better. So what I get to also that, that that kind of thing that you're describing and, and you've got, it's so embedded in your professional character, right? Like you're, uh, you're, you just embody rehab okay. therapy, right? But that is different than what the nurses are doing. Because they're, you're, 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 yes, you're tending the body, but you're tending the spirit too, aren't you? Absolutely. And at the facility where I'm working right now, I had an instant that there's that balance between risk and safety. And I know the family wouldn't mind me sharing this little scenario that I did recently. And the resident has since passed away. But it pleases me that one of his last memories would have been the fact from Vancouver, BC, I took this resident across on a ferry to Bowen Island, a small island off of West Vancouver, uh, with certainly no hospital. So if any emergency was needed, that was a little bit risky, but the family and the resident willingly signed a form to take responsibility for this. And I did my recreation therapy research and got a couple of phone numbers of even a physician that lived on Bowen Island. And knowing too where Lionsgate Hospital is in North Vancouver, if I would need to have an unplanned visit to that hospital. And with BC Ferries, they kindly offered me, um, it's kind of like pre-boarding assistant, guaranteed boarding on a certain small ferry. And the, that day for that family and that resident who actually hadn't even been out of bed, that's why it was quite high risk, in the nine years I'd worked here, um, that would have been one of his last memories. And the family thanked me profusely even later on. He eventually passed away, um, not related <laughs> to that outing. But the doctor gave, the physician ultimately indeed gave the permission. But for this resident, because he hadn't been comfortably seated in an appropriate wheelchair, the only wheelchair he really used was um, 
commode type to be transferred from his bed for showering. So this was quite um, bold, shall 